Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of Role Model Makers Experts Cafe. I'm your host, Dr. L, the Parent Whisperer, and today with me, I have an amazing lady, Miss Teresa Alexander uh, Inman. Did I say that correctly, Teresa? Yes, you did, Dr. L. Okay. Awesome. Um, now, Teresa, I wanted to ask you, uh, because I, I love how you show up. I've had a few opportunities now to have conversation with you. Uh, and audience members, thank you for tuning in, because I think what Teresa is about to say is something that should be on your radar. So, Teresa, welcome to the channel. Tell us a little bit more about yourself, how you got to do what you do, and what is it that you're focusing on today? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to tell you, they call you the parent whisperer, they call me the child whisperer. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the dynamic duo. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so... Um, today, I am a board certified behavior analyst and infant toddler developmental specialist. And um, so I work with children providing early intervention services because we can make such a big difference at that time of a child's life. So that's my passion. I thoroughly enjoy it. And and when I see the changes that a child makes, you know, going from not talking to telling their parents what they want. I have goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> so, so I know what you're talking about. And this, I, I I got that goosebump in private practice when I was seeing these transformations. But let's back it up a little bit. How did you get involved in this? And what motivated you to do this in the first place? Okay, so I started out, I, I've always wanted to work with children, you know, youth of some sort. And I started in juvenile justice. And every time a child reoffended. It just it felt like there was a kick to my stomach. And while working in juvenile justice, my supervisor was like, well, you know, why don't you look into becoming a behavior analyst? I had no idea what it was, but I looked into it, fell in love with it from the first day. My my um, professor, I mean, he cried. He was so passionate about the course. And that just touched me so deeply. So I got into behavior analysis. And after doing that for over 10 years, I realized we see children from three years old on, and there's so much more that could be done before that. So I studied and received my credential, my certification as an infant toddler developmental specialist. Um, and for me, it's even more, more of a journey because I realized my son was premature. My second son was premature. And so often I was like, you know, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I really had no idea what I was doing. And so often today, you know, 30 something years later, I wonder, you know, I ask myself, what could I have done different? I mean, he's doing great, but I still have those questions. And I don't want parents to have those questions. I totally get that. And, uh, you know, as parents, we always want what's best for our kids and we want to do right by them. But the issue is, as rapid as science is advancing, there are many things that have been around for decades and parents often are unaware of it uh, and not recognizing what's available to them is the first issue. And then the other issue is that sometimes these things land on your doorstep. You actually have these issues and you don't know how to approach it or how to address it or who to reach out to. So I'm so glad that you actually came forward and decided to do this interview with us because I know that the stuff that you do keeps you busy. So, um, all right. So let's, let's go back to about behavior analysts uh, and what are some of the challenges, some of the things that you typically see people come to you with so that parents can kind of be more aware of those kind of things. And I know that you're focused on prevention as well. So we'll go back to that in a little bit as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So as a behavior analyst, I work with children who, you know, have communication delays. Maybe they're three years old or even, you know, toilet training. So we start toilet training as soon as possible to make it easier on the parent. Um, Self-help skills, uh, just social skills. Yeah. So just a lot of just skills that will help a child function independently mm -hmm. uh, without having, you know, always having a parent there to mediate and moderate what's happening. Okay. I, I like that. And I use the developmental milestones as a huge tool when we, we were discussing the development of a child. Um, I also wanted to bring this to the parents' attention. I don't know exactly where you stand on this. 
Uh, but I know that sometimes parents are anxious to see their kids grow up or develop faster than they're supposed to. So what are yeah. your thoughts about kids that might actually develop faster than the developmental milestone charts? Uh, is that yeah. something that is good or is that something that you think, uh, you know, you should avoid? What, do you, what are your inputs on that? <laughs> you know, I say, what, so I want the parents to avoid trying to create a child. <laughs> Right to make the child something because of their own needs. Embrace your child and let them guide you as to where they want to go, because then you'll really see their strengths. Right, because a lot of times we try to get them to do this and do that, and they're not ready, or maybe it's you know maybe they've gone ahead in that. Just meet your child where they are and embrace them where they are. That's really important because many of the parents that are super caring and in some cases fall victim to helicopter parenting, uh, that's one of the things that happens, that they're putting so much on the kids as in exposing them, but in the process, the child is kind of getting lost in the whole um, bathtub, basically bathwater, I guess. That's what it comes down to. All right. So yeah. that being said... Um, Let's go ahead and do a deeper dive as far as what are some of the tips and suggestions that you have, because um, people come with certain concerns. Mm -hmm. And what we were saying earlier is that sometimes uh, these things are preventable. So how do we kind of familiarize your, ourselves with what is in our control, what we can prevent versus what are some of the things that we need to remedy? Right. So the first thing I want to tell parents, your gut is your guidance for your child. That is my belief. If you feel something, if you feel that your child is not progressing as they, you know, as you're comfortable with, then please get help. And you may go to a doctor and they'll say, wait, please don't wait. Because so many parents I've worked with, they've waited. And then now it's years later and their four-year-old is just starting to talk where we could have helped them much earlier when from the time you notice there are things that we can do immediately. So one of the things I tell parents to do, you know, if your child is not attending to you, be silly, have fun. I mean, I always want you to have fun because the more fun you have with your child, the more they're going to learn, right? I worked with parents who have said, oh, you're playing with my child too much. Like you came here to do ABA and all you're doing is playing. I said, well, I am doing ABA right? My brand of ABA involves play because play is how children learn. For play, children is hard work. You right. know, um, when I leave a child, like yesterday, I was working with a young man and the mom said, every time after you leave, he takes a nap because it's like, yes, we're having fun. We're playing, but he's thinking more, right? We're, we're building those pathways in his brain. So it is going to tire him out. And that's a good thing. I'm glad he gets some rest. So now his brain can, you know, assimilate what he's learned, you know, just get some time to, you know, some downtime to really get into what he learned during the session. And then a week later, I go back and she's like, he said, mama, and he did this and he did that. I'm like, yes, that is it. You know, that really excites me. <laughs> right. that, totally. I totally agree that there's a lot of stuff that as grownups and adults, we've been doing it for decades and yeah. we don't even realize we're doing it. But for mm -hmm. kids that are doing this for the very first time, it's like right, learning to ride a bicycle. It literally, like you said, you're building new neural pathways. You can actually see physiologic changes like their pulse and their respiration actually goes up. You might not be aware of it, but that's all going on inside of them. And they need the rest afterwards. And they, they, they're they going to be different and forever change as a result of it. So very cool. Uh, one of the other things that I really cool about what you guys do is the fact that the results of some of the stuff that you do is so foundational and below the surface, but like so pervasive in all different aspects of lives. Uh, and I love that because, you know, oftentimes when parents are going someplace uh, or for, for a specialist, they have a specific symptom in mind. Mm -hmm. But they don't realize that there's all these other stuff in the kid's life that also is being affected by the same underlying cause. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about that. Let's say, for instance, I don't know if you want to give an example, but uh, what has been some of your experiences as far as the changes and transformations that you've seen? Oh, my gosh. Leaps and bounds. So. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, again, so a parent will come and they'll say, okay, well, my child does not talk. First thing we have to do, though, is make sure that they're able to attend to us. Are they, you know, are they in the room? Are they present? They may be physically in the room, 
but then they're, you know, they're not focused. They're just doing their own thing in their own world and just getting that child to be focused, they can learn everything from there on, right? But I think a lot of parents don't realize that, you know, a child will be walking around and yes, they're talking, but they're looking up and they're spinning and they're, you know, all this, this you know, going on and they don't realize that there is no shared attention, which again, it's, um, it's one of the foundational skills that a child needs in order to learn. Because without that, they're not going to get that communication because for communication, a child will look at you and look at the way your mouth moves and they're hearing you. So if they're not able to focus on you, you know, your face and hear your voice, then they're not going to learn. They're not going to be open to learning other things, right? There's no way that we can teach them because imitation is actually where it all starts, right? So when they're able to, Im to imitate, that's, a, that's one of the biggest foundational skills that you can actually build on. Awesome. I love it. This is a really fun topic for me. And, and I know that it is for you as well. And it's a very important one as well. Uh, so if parents uh, or families uh, know children that they want to be proactive about their development, or they're noticing something and they are not sure who to turn to, how can people find out more about you and connect with you? They can actually, you know, I'll just give you my email address. It's They can actually email me personally. And I, because I like to handle things myself <laughs> at Teresa. So T-H-E-R-E-S-A at Teresa Alexander Inman, I-N-M-A-N dot com. Awesome. Beautiful. Uh, guys, I'm going to actually go ahead and put that in the description. Uh, Teresa has also given me a whole host of other support and bonuses and other cool things that you can check uh, information, have access to. I'll put all of that in the resources. So um, I have two asks for you guys. Number one yeah. is show your kids, role model the behavior that you don't have to have all the answers and the importance of connecting to other human beings in the world that actually want to support you and might have the solutions to your challenges. Uh, and number two is make sure that by checking this, you connect to Teresa and uh, you actually become part of a network that uh, can actually give you professional advice, can give you solutions and things that might not even be on your radar, but that awareness is really, really important. And hey, kids get to play and have fun with her. So why not? Right. So go ahead and check that out. If you haven't already done so, make sure you also click subscribe. So you get notified of all the stuff that comes on the channel, all the experts that show up and bring their amazing talents and their gifts to you guys. And you can get the notification on that. Um, Teresa, before we finish, any final words for our audience members today? Okay. So because I'm so passionate about everything, I actually wrote a little book. It's nice. called, How Can I Help My Child Communicate? Reason for that, so many parents, you know, they don't know how to help their child. You know, like this morning I was with a little girl and the, her sister was like, she doesn't talk. I was like, well, please talk to her. I know she doesn't talk, but if you want her to talk, I need you to keep talking to her. So if your child, you know, or a lot of times with autism, well, they don't like to play. It's not that they don't like to play or they don't not like to interact. They don't know how. So the things that we don't, that they don't know how to do, let's teach them and not assume that they don't like to, or they may never, because I've worked with children who went from not babbling to, you know, less than a year later, they're speaking in sentences. So it is possible. Right. I just want to leave you with that. And the other thing I want to say is please don't judge yourselves because you don't know what you don't know. I beautifully said. I love all of that. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And guys, thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Cheers.